In this video, you will learn how to draw a force diagram. Earlier we learned how to draw a system schema. A system schema is good for looking at all the objects in a situation and thinking about how they relate to one another, how they interact with one another, and the forces between different objects. A force diagram, on the other hand, puts the focus on all the forces acting on one object. When we focus on one object, it's a little bit easier to show the size of each of the different forces on the object. And we're going to use force diagrams more when we get into mathematical problems with forces. If you would like to write down the steps to a force diagram, you can pause the video here, but we will be going forward. We're going to be using the situations that we drew system schemas for in the previous video. The first thing that you need to do is decide which single object that you're going to draw a force diagram for. You can draw a force diagram for any object. We could draw one for the table, the block, the string, even the entire earth. But in this case, we're going to focus on the block, so I'm going to put a little dashed line around it. That's not really a required part, but it does help you to um, focus in on the block. We're going to use a dot or a square to represent that block in the force diagram. So you can draw a dot or a box, it doesn't matter which. That represents the block. And then we're going to draw each of the forces. And the new thing that a force diagram is adding is you can show direction more easily. So we've got four forces that are coming into and out of the block. One, two, three, four. That means the block has four interactions that we will need to show on the force diagram. So we'll take them one at a time and think about the direction that those forces will be acting. We're going to do the force due to gravity first. The force due to gravity is always directed towards the center of the Earth. And on our force diagrams, we'll generally represent that as down. So FG for force due to gravity. Then we'll add some subscripts. Since we can't see the other objects in a force diagram, we're going to use subscripts to show what objects are applying that force to the block. So in this case, the entire Earth is applying this force to the block. The subscript, the subscript is EE applies to B. Now let's look at the second force, the force of friction. That one is always going to be in the opposite direction that something's trying to move for an inanimate object that can't move itself. So if a block is being drug um, one direction, the force of friction will be opposing its movement. So looking at the picture here, according to where the string is, it looks like the block is getting moved this way. So the force of friction will be going in the opposite direction. So on my force diagram, I show the force of friction pointing this way. We'll label it force of friction. And the object applying the friction to the block is the table. So the force of friction that the table applies to the block. Next force on our, force, on our system schema is normal force. The table also applies that to the block. Um, the normal force means normal as in perpendicular, not normal as in it's always there. It's not always there. So it's perpendicular to the two surfaces that are interacting. The surfaces are the block and the table, and perpendicular to that would be, in this case, up and down. So in our force diagram, the normal force will be pointed up, F sub n for normal force, and the table applies that to the block. One more force to place in our force diagram, and that is force of tension. Tension is always directed along the string, so or the chain or whatever is applying tension. So if we look here, the string is going this way, so so will the force of tension. Force of tension will be this way. Force of tension that the string applies to the block. Getting these force diagrams right is going to be the key to making problem solving easy. So you need to get good at force diagrams. Another thing to note, in this force diagram, there's one force up, one force down, one to the right, and one to the left. That is not always going to be the case. It happens to be here, and it's in part coincidence because we have one, two, three, four different interactions with the block on our system schema. So let's look at a second example.
Here we could do a force diagram for again several objects, so log, the chain, the tractor. We are going to do um, the log to start out with. And we could also do one for the tractor. We'll start with the log. Um, it's also nice to label the force diagram with what object that it is. So this is going to be for the log. I'll do a dot this time. You can choose if you want to do a dot or a box. It makes no difference. Again, I like to start with the force of gravity. It's always going to be directed towards the center of the Earth, which will generally be down. So the force of gravity that the entire Earth applies to the log. Um, next, we see the normal force and the frictional force. Normal means perpendicular to the two surfaces, and our two surfaces touching are the log and the ground. So perpendicular to that would be up and down. So the normal force will be up, and the ground applies that to the log. We have the force of tension, which is pointed along the string. And this is the force of tension the chain applies to the log. And finally, we have the force of friction opposing the motion. Force of friction that the ground applies to the log. We could also do a force diagram for the tractor. So we'll do that over here. Tractor. And it's interesting to compare them. The tractor is a little bit different than the log. The log is an inanimate object. It cannot move itself. The tractor, on the other hand, powers itself. Tractors, humans, cars, animals, all um, use the ground. They move forward by pushing the ground backwards. So for things that can move themselves, it's a different type of friction. It's called rolling friction. and it, Or sometimes you may have heard it called traction. The ground pushes you forward. So... For this, for the tractor's force diagram, we still got four forces, but this time we're actually going to show the force of friction will be forward. And it's forward because in this case it's rolling friction. The force of friction that the ground applies to the tractor. So the ground is actually pushing the tractor forward as the tractor's wheels push the ground backwards. So this is rolling friction. Might even be worth making a note about that to yourself. Alright, so we're going to continue on with our force diagram. For the tractor, we've got the force of gravity, which is pretty typically pointed towards the center of the Earth. So the force of gravity that the entire Earth applies to the tractor. In this case, the tractor is being pulled backwards by the string. So the force of tension that the string applies to the tractor, or the chain applies to the tractor, is going backwards. And we have the normal force pointing up, perpendicular, normal, to the ground. Force normal that the ground applies to the tractor. Now, as I mentioned before, it's somewhat coincidence. A lot of things will have four forces, but there doesn't always have to be. If we were to draw a force diagram for the chain, you only see three interactions with the chain and other objects, so the chain would really only have three forces on its force diagram. So, um, it's, so a lot of common examples will start out with forces in all directions, but that is not a rule. Instead, you need to use your force catalog to see what forces would be present and predict, like, if are things touching? If so, then there needs to be a force between them. You also need to look at your force catalog for hints as to how to decide the direction of the forces in the force diagram. So you need, is now your chance to practice. You've got some homework where you'll be making force diagrams from system schemas. Good luck.